Welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies to reset your career with actionable steps towards a finer future. I've spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups. Today, I show others how to do the same. I'm on a mission to help professionals everywhere learn how to refresh and manage their minds so they can thrive in their careers. Ready? Let's do it. Hey friends, how's you? Welcome back to another episode of the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. This week, I have a juicy topic and one that I struggled with as an employee and at times during my entrepreneurial journey. If you've been listening to me for a while, you won't be surprised that it has to do with not managing your mind so that you can escape your life. Yep, this is the Sunday Scaries, my friends. When I first heard this term, I didn't have the Sunday scaries yet. Who would have thought there would have been a time where my greenness was my fuel? I didn't know what I didn't know, and I wasn't burnt out yet, and I was having fun, excitement. I was mentally stimulated on a regular basis. Every day felt like I was sitting in an Aaron Sorkin screenplay. The quick banter, the wit, intellectually stimulating, I wasn't dating anyone, and it was like my colleagues and I were married to each other as a team. Looking back on those days, it never occurred to me that it was weird that at like 5 p.m. most days, someone walked around the floor and dropped off our drinks at our actual desks. No joke. So not quite a bar cart, but a very crisp glass of Sansair would suddenly appear. This is so curious to me today, how this all kind of played out. But anywho, I was hanging out with a bunch of colleagues one Sunday evening a few years back. Late summer, Upper West Side roof deck apartment and barbecue in Manhattan. Pretty sweet digs, 360 view. And one of the executive creative directors at the agency had invited us, a few of us over for a meal. And as the night wore on and the sky turned to that late summer sunset color that you often see on the East Coast, you know, that reddish orange with that still blue sky looking out over the city, my teammates started to talk about how they were depressed that we had to go to work tomorrow. I was confused because I was just enjoying that, like, look at, we get to do this. We get to play on a school night. And suddenly the conversation started to get a little sad and they called it the Sunday Scaries. And one guy said that he had to fight them all day on Sunday, that Sunday scaries for him set it around noon, and then he fights them until he goes to bed. And most people around the circle agreed. This was so strange to me because like everyone else, I liked most aspects of my job. We clearly got along well as a team and we'd often form a united front against an unreasonable client or management, and we always got through it together. So I had no idea what this concept of Sunday scaries was, but again, I was pretty green. The conversation stayed with me for years, and it took me about 10 years before I got my own case of the Sunday scaries. And looking back, I had the perfect triangulation of previous successes, performance pressure, and the daily hum of anxiety. I was an anxious achiever. That's the way I ran. You could be on the team that won a billion dollar piece of business last week, but the attitude was kind of like, well, what have you done for us this morning? And while I did love most aspects of my job, I think it's fair to say that success at an agency has a very short half-life. Success wears off rapidly and you have to always feed that beast. And I understand that this is true for the top tech platforms, media companies, like the big consulting firms, finance, law, the list goes on. It's all of these careers of high risk, high reward. They all have a short half-life of success. My previous success, the performance pressure that I put on myself, the clients put on us, management put on us, and anxiety met with my unmanaged mind put myself in a situation where I was bound to get the Sunday scaries. 
And for any of you who have been spared so far, the Sunday Scaries is the feeling of doom that shows up the evening before another week begins. It can make you feel miserable, and it can certainly suck the fun out of the remaining free time you have that day. It's basically anticipatory stress or pre-traumatic stress. It's the fear of fear. You think you won't be able to handle what's going to be thrown your way this week, so you start to get into a panic. It is that stress anticipation. There's an informal survey from 2018 conducted by LinkedIn that suggests that 80% of adults survey say they experience Sunday night anxiety. We overdo everything during the week. We work long hours. We're using our brains for both finding the solution and running disaster scenarios based on our fears. We're not taking care of ourselves and there's too much screen time. You're doing the social media doomsday scroll before bed. Perhaps you have limited or no exercise and you may not be fueling yourself with proper nutrition. Add on a pandemic working from home while kids need homeschooling and it's no wonder while this is still a recurring issue. And then we try to make up for it on the weekends. I began to hate Mondays and then I would love Fridays. And by the way, I did really, for the most part, love my job and love my work, but there were things like that constant never ending demand and an occasional dicky client that would really have me trying to escape from my weekday life. I didn't know how to find the way to get the work done and to show up for myself. I would exhaust myself on Saturday overconsumption of alcohol, food, exercise, screen time, you name it, I crammed it in. And then I would get so anxious and stressed that by 3 p.m. or so on Sunday, I had to get home to deal with the anxiety of going back to work on a Monday. And sometimes I raised home from the beach or wherever I was for the weekend, and I would just need to prepare, which usually ended up being more wine and HBO. Other times I would think, I am going to savor every minute of this weekend, every minute of this Sunday. So I'd wait for the last minute to begin this sometimes two-hour trek back to New York City. And this might start at 10 p.m. So I'm rolling into the city at midnight. I was thinking this might stop the Sunday scaries, and it didn't. I was just exhausted between the traffic and the commute that I would be too tired and too wired to go to bed. And as someone who had a traumatic brain injury, I need like 10 hours of sleep so that I can keep the symptoms at bay and still be able to function. So I certainly wasn't starting off my week with the best opportunity because I was coming in exhausted and dizzy. And even if I didn't overconsume and overdo it on the weekends, if the work week was super stressful, let's face it, two days of chilling out isn't going to make up for the five days of hell. So how come I found myself here week after week? It was because I wasn't managing my mind. I wasn't questioning why I felt this way. I was just accepting that it was part of the nature of work. I didn't question getting a new job. I had resigned myself to believe that it would be the same thing everywhere. So there's no point in switching jobs unless there's like a huge chunk of cash. And I didn't know if I was burnt out or if I just needed a vacation. My company was pretty generous and they offered a sabbatical at a reduced pay, but I felt I was too busy, so I didn't even investigate the possibility of the option. I also didn't use all my vacation, yet that was part of my compensation. And this is so funny to me because if I asked you, were you willing to forego four weeks of your salary for nothing in exchange, would you? Because that's what you're doing when you're leaving your salary on the table. It's part of your comp. Take your vacation. I was letting a few workplace scenarios paint the whole picture. I was very good at going global fast. Look, your brain is always looking out to protect you. It's looking for the thoughts that are going to stress you out and it wants to get ahead of them. When we train the brain with the awareness that these thoughts are involuntary, we can stop trying to control them and accept that they're just going to be there. They're going to pop up occasionally. And the truth is, you do have a choice. Sometimes the first thought just pops out of nowhere, but then you have an opportunity to find the pause and control the second thought. 
We have a choice that we can push these thoughts away and ignore them. We can choose not to process them, but they will linger and more Sunday scaries will loom ahead in the coming weeks. From my experience, resisting and pushing them aside is a temporary solution. Resistance is like a rubber band. It can only stretch so far before it snaps back. Keep resisting and eventually we want to numb out with alcohol, food, social media, or whatever the drug of choice is. If you're in a meeting or driving your car, it's probably not the best time to process why you're in the Sunday scaries, but I encourage you to come back and look at those thoughts later. Ask yourself, do you need a new job? Do you need a break or do you need a mind shift? You don't have to control all of your thoughts. You just have to learn not to take action from your crappy thoughts. This is where working with a coach is super helpful because a coach can show you your thinking and help you determine what's the next best step for you. And they'll help you do it a heck of a lot faster than if you did it your own. When I hired a coach, everything began to shift. Over time, I really questioned what I was thinking. I learned tools to manage my mind and I turned the Sunday scaries into what then I started to call the Sunday sacred. Sundays became the anchor for me between what was and reflection and what's possible. I started to live in the possibility of the week ahead. I began a Sunday ritual where I choose to be home by the late afternoon. I would then prepare for my week. This meant waiting for my fresh direct food order. I would then prep my food for the week so I had the proper nutrition that I wanted. I reviewed my calendar for the week ahead and I would block off focus time so that I had a moment to think. I planned the mornings that I would exercise, the evenings where I would see at the time my boyfriend, now my husband. I would wonder which of the days that I could see my friends, get clear if I had work obligations or client dinners, and then also try to get ahead of which nights might be late ones. I also looked at my thoughts and got ahead of what do I need to be thinking in order to be on my A game? What do I need to be thinking in order to create the results that I want? How do I need to be thinking to keep holding myself as the high performance professional I wanted to be? Everything shifted when I learned how to rethink my thoughts. So if you have that creeping sense of dread on Sundays, while there isn't always a fast and easy fix, change is possible. In addition to the Sunday sacred, I created what I call the Monday mindset. I would look at what I could do to make Monday lighter, more buoyant, and when possible, fun. Who could I meet with? Was there someone I could network with? What connections could I make? Did I want to plan a lunch or an early morning coffee or a late night dinner? What did I want to do to make Monday be something I could look forward to? Sometimes I would even work a teeny bit longer on Friday so that I could lighten my workload on Monday. There was something about that transition back that knew that if I got ahead of it, it started to help me feel a bit better. Other times I might decide to work for two hours on a Sunday when I was more relaxed after having Saturday off to reduce my Monday burden. There's no right or wrong answer. You just have to find what works for you. So to recap, consider prepping for Monday on Friday or Sunday. Get ahead of your workload so that Monday feels lighter and more manageable. Calendaring was the art that saved my week. Find your non-negotiables. Food, exercise, sleep. What do you need as the minimum baseline in order for you to function? Don't overpack your weekends. Carve out some unplanned time so you can let the day unfold where possible. And watch the overconsumption, not only of activities, but food, alcohol, social media, news. These things will drain you. Consider creating a Sunday sacred ritual where you are in the best mindset possible as you get ready to start the week ahead. Manage your mind, question your thoughts, and really find out why you are having the Sunday scaries. Do you need to find a new job or do you just need to actually use your vacation days? It is possible not to let this feeling take over your night. Acknowledge it, accept it, And while you may not be able to get 
rid of it completely, you can learn to train your brain and your behavior towards a Monday mindset. I hope this information was helpful for you. And before I go, who are you getting support from? I'd be honored to help you with your career challenges. You can learn more at my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. All right, my friends, have a fab day and I will see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this podcast and you want more career and mindset tips, get on my email list by going to jillgriffincoaching.com. I'll also put that link in the show notes. But before you go, please rate and review this podcast as it helps me get the word out to people everywhere so they can thrive in the workplace. I'll see you next time.